Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another exciting installment in um, in dealing series of webinars. Um, today we are um, going to be talking about a slightly different topic. We haven't done a webinar in the area of cameras or surveillance before. No, um, I think we've just mainly stuck to the wireless and the switching, so it's time to expand on our portfolio a little bit more. The bit that everybody loves, eh? Yeah. <laughs> we did we did talk about indoor cameras, didn't we, and the, the dealing cap, but this we is have more of a consumer range as well. Yeah, this is more of a business type solution, more of um not not all but um indoor and, and outdoor there's a there's a lot of options in this kind of area and dealing have some very very good and competitive products here so uh, we, we thought it was about time we uh talked surveillance yes yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we want to talk a little bit not just about what the portfolio does but um just how it can actually enrich your network as well okay that's uh Move on to the first slide. Um, as you can see, D-Link offers the, um, the total solution to video surveillance without wanting to read the exact words that are on the slide there, <laughs> but um, uh, unavoidable in some places. Um, as, as, as you know, we've, we've already touched on the, um, the switches, the access points, um, and the, the central management, which is um, a stuff that we're talking about a lot here with the launch of um, Nucleus Connect and, and those right. various yeah. other bits that we have going as a company um, th then you'll see the the dome cameras and the fixed bullet cameras both part of the vigilance range um, and then our MVRs um, and the, the, the different models that we can offer in that kind of area which I say we all touch a lot more on but that's when, when we get down to the detail that's when Craig is really going to uh, really really going to shine <laughs> yeah so just to be clear um, we at dealing have always done a total solution when it comes to IP surveillance. It's really the key word being IP surveillance. Um, because as we all know, everything is data connected these days. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, we can use switches, which normally, as you can see, power an access point. Yeah. And it's the same kind of technology. You can power a camera as well. So you don't necessarily have to just stick to um, using your same switch that you've already got there for, for a, an access point. If you want to throw in a couple of cameras, there's something you could absolutely do. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously that builds upon your uh, your current network as well. So we'll like, be, why not? We were talking about that connectability when we come on to the OMVIF slides That's and right. a little bit later in the presentation. Okay, so let's move on. Um, just to, just as a kickoff, um, this is the kind of um, thing that we're talking about about us being uh, the, the the total solution. Um, so we've got a couple of examples here um, where dealing products can uh, basically be the, the 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 total solution. So from the very the very start, the switch to the MVRs to the uh, so, sorry, so from the very start, which is the core switch, um, and then the guys switch, underneath yeah. that. And we can even help with uh, how the internet comes in as well with our routers, our, uh, our business Bonus. range routers. Um, so uh, just to give you a quick overview, what do you actually need for IP surveillance? There's some people out there that might be coming from a coaxial background, and in the past they would have used a very different kind of switch to power these devices, and sure. it's really just a closed environment, which is why it was called CCTV, closed circuit television don't really use that term anymore, or we shouldn't, we still do, but it's, really the meaning of it has actually changed. It's a very search term on Google when, when we're looking up the keywords, it's a very it popular is. term. People but still it's, call it CCTV, yeah, it's it, what we've always known. It doesn't not, encompass what, what, what it used to. But, yeah, but the yeah, idea yeah, of a closed yeah. circuit network, you can mm. still do it, mm. but it's not really closed circuit anymore. Sure. The reason for that is because it's data. And data passes through your network the same as any other data, whether it's a PC, an access point, an access control, a uh, mobile phone that's mm -hmm. connected to a guest. Network. It's, all, it's all data. It's all the same kind of packets and how it moves around the network. So doing that for video feed is no different either. Sure. It's really yeah. powering. You know, we have to think about power. So again, power. we go back to our PoE switches, which we discussed in the past. And using those switches, we can power uh, up to 80 meters or so for, for a standard camera, mm. power it up, one cable, fit it any way you like. You know, a lot yeah. of companies, they might have full ceilings, 
which is generally the case, you just pop it through, trying to channel your traffic, and if, if you've already got an access point there, you can just Excellent. use uh, add a camera using the same kind of equipment. Yeah, and then I noticed on there, Craig, that we've got the DGS um, 1100MP slash MPP. Um, right, that's right. Which, uh, so uh, we are doing a little bit of a shift this year. Um, we're going to be looking at a few a few changes to our switching portfolio to try and make it a little bit more clear cut, but also provide some new features. So I just mm -hmm. mentioned that um, generally you go about eighty meters because hundred meters for data for for a, yep. a cable. Yep. Um, it's generally what we say, and then obviously eighty meters because you it can lose a little bit of power. But we're what we're trying to do is we're going to add some switches this year. Ooh. go beyond that reach. spoiler alert yeah, coming up spoiler. later <laughs> um so we'll have a quick look at those at the end of the, at the end of the webinar fantastic um just on to a, another quick example here um just 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 an example of, of um an, an everyday bank and and how you would set up surveillance how you would um uh, and how you could designate zones basically around your uh, around your bank that's of, right um, the different kinds and the different kind of cameras that you can use in in each one of those places so, yeah. so, yeah. so there's actually quite a lot to talk about when you're looking at cameras and installing oh, yeah. you know, i've done yeah. a few installs myself and, and helped people with uh, fitting solutions and one of the things that uh, always comes back to is storage of that data um, there's many things that you have to think about. Obviously, we, we also have to think about GDPR these days as well, how you store Don't get me started. Your data. <laughs> I'll leave that bit to you. Um, but more importantly, um, storing how much data that you want to save for your video footage. Sure. It's going to be different for everybody. And obviously, different storage is different costs. Mm. And everybody wants to keep the cost down, especially when you've got lots of cameras. So mm. if, you're, if you're a medium-sized company and you've got, say, 30 cameras, that's quite a bit of data that you have to store. And then you start having to think about, well, how much data can I actually use? Mm. Mm. What, what makes sense? Can well, I, can how, I long, how long do I need to retain yeah, that exactly. for? All, 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 all those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. So yeah. what you can generally do is um, think about some of the other features on, that come in the camera, things like motion sensory, motion mm. capture. Mm. So maybe rather than a 24-hour recording all the time. You just you want it to be triggered by motion. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely, trigger yeah. it by motion. Yeah. And then also think about the times that you actually want it to work as well. Maybe you don't need the cameras running 24-7. So mm. maybe it's you're in an environment where you don't, don't necessarily want to monitor. Say, say you're a school and you've got children running around. It's actually probably, you need to think about, is it, you know, can't really put a camera in a classroom to monitor the children, but maybe you can monitor them in the halls and things like that. Or maybe in the classroom it will come on when school's finished. Absolutely. For, if you, if you, if you yeah. make sure you educate the people mm. in your area about how the cameras work as well, which mm. is generally what you have to do for a school uh, for safeguarding purposes. Um, so you, you can schedule cameras to come on and off as well. Brilliant. <laughs> Next slide. This is a Craig slide. So I will this hand over Craig to Craig. Slide. I apologise <laughs> that it looks a little bit boring from the other side. Um, there is a reason for that. And it, um, the, re the whole point of, of this webinar today <clears throat> is really to discuss our auto surveillance VLAN feature, what's mm. on our switches. Mm. Um, a lot of people, I think, aren't really aware of what ASV does. Um, but when I explain it to them, it's like uh, a little light bulb that kind of comes on. They're like, oh, that would save me so much time and hassle. I'll let you know when that little light bulb <laughs> appears above my head. Um, right. So if you're, if you're familiar <laughs> with installing IP surveillance in the past, you'll know that um, the best way to do it is to either keep the unit separate. So you have a separate switch, separate cameras. People still do that. They don't necessarily want to include it in a big network, right. especially if you've got lots of cameras. You kind of want to keep the switch. But if you're just adding one or two cameras mm. and you've already got POE switches for access points and things, there's absolutely no harm you're putting a couple of cameras into one of the switches. Now, what you also want to do is you want to keep the traffic segmented from the rest of your network. So you might be familiar with, with things we've discussed before where you'd have a guest network and you'd have an office network for your Wi-Fi. You keep that traffic separate and you use a VLAN to do it, a mm. virtual LAN. Do the same thing with the cameras. Keep your cameras on a completely different network. Now, when you start doing your segmentation, you can start doing things like quality of service. And what that means is you mm. can say, well, this is a high priority. I want to give this traffic high priority so it reaches its destination storage 
over other things. So that's so that's the that's the key benefit then is that we can look at the switches and then say to the switches, the cameras are the highest priority. We have to make sure that they get there, and then Absolutely. everybody else gets. Yeah, because you don't yeah. want to start losing frames and losing Brilliant. traffic on the network. Okay. Yeah. Also, when you enable this, another key feature is that when you plug a camera into a, a switch, it automatically knows it's a camera and it puts it onto that VLAN without any further configuration, mm. which is really easy and nice because you just go into the switch first, this, especially if you've got 60 or 70 cameras to install, mm. enable this feature, set up your VLAN the way you want it, and then you just plug the cameras in. And that's how they that's earn the it. name Smart Switch, right? <laughs> one of the reasons, yeah, one of the reasons that smart switch, but not all smart switches come with an audio surveillance feeling. No. It's something that you have to be very careful of. It's something we do at D-Link because we do cameras, you see. Mm. So that's where that total mm. solution factors in. Now, on this slide, you'll see the left-hand side, that's the actual screen where you enable it, and you set what VLAN ID you want, quality of services automatically on there already. So it's literally just a case of pressing the radio button and telling them the number you want. Sure. On the right-hand side, you'll see another setting page. Now, this is really key for this because what we do is as D-Link, we do D-Link cameras and we put in the D-Link MAC addresses for ourselves, you see? Okay. So if you plug in the D-Link camera, it's automatically going to work. But in the future, you might decide that you want to kind of use different cameras or maybe you already have cameras that you've purchased. By adding the MAC address or at least the first part of the MAC address of that camera vendor, mm. you're also able to work with third-party cameras, which sure. makes it a really good total solution, not just for D-Link cameras, but for everybody else. So it's really worth having a look at. Yeah, we're, we're okay with that. As long as you use our switches. Exactly. You can, uh, that's the thing. You, can, you pay your money, you, you take your choice. We know that um, uh, we, we have a lot of cameras in our range, but we, we might not have the solution for absolutely everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, there's some really high, high end cameras at the enterprise level. Yeah, oh, might, yeah, yeah. Maybe that we don't really kind of uh, do at that part. Because um, that's not really our focus. That's not our customer base. No, no. Um, but we we'll, we still support those cameras. And our well. switches, our switches, yeah, our switches uh, will work with those and put, do, do a great job. Yeah. So, so yeah. if you're looking for a mm. PTZ that can uh, see across an airport uh, and we look at someone's that. pocket, <laughs> <laughs> we, we can still power it. At least. <laughs> but we can we can power it, and our switches will do a, a, a pretty good job of uh, of managing that for you. Absolutely. So, excellent. Okay. On VIF. On VIF, yes. Uh, I guess this is another meat slide. Um, <laughs> so uh, we just discussed a perfect example you did. of yeah. uh, how you might want to use other vendors, how you mm. might want to integrate things. We're a networking company. If we just made things for ourselves, where would, where would the world go with that? Well, we exactly. have to be open-minded. We have to allow compatibility. Yeah. And that's what OnVIF is, actually. This isn't a, a D-Link product. This is an open standard that security cameras have, have kind of agreed upon to use. Mm. Um, so when we build, we build with this in mind, mm. and we make sure that our cameras are OnVIF compliant, um, and we also make sure that the switches that we use understand what OnVIF is as well. Sure. And when you do these things, that means that you can work with third parties. So let's say, for example, you put our cameras into a third party NVR, mm -hmm. and that uses OnVIF, they'll work together. Likewise, if you use one of our NVRs and a third party camera you can plug in, because it's OnVIF, as long as it's OnVIF, it will work no problem. And, and you, you'll notice that Craig's done a brilliant job so far of just saying third party and not mentioning any competitive ones, which is good job Craig. other brands are available <laughs> <laughs> but we couldn't possibly comment uh, but we can obviously um comment a little bit more on our our range of cameras um yes we can so this this is the um uh, this is the bullet camera range yeah, um, I was just checking. Uh, no, I know, I know it's the bullet camera range, but this is the the, the vigilance. Um, so the latest model, the four seven o five e, which I think has been out for a few months. A few now. months now, not, yeah, not, just not, uh, not, not, not a great deal towards, of time. Quarter four, beginning quarter four. I think. Yeah, yeah, and that's like that's <laughs> our five five megapixel model. That's right, you'll yeah. you, you'll notice, and Craig informed me of this when we were um, pulling together the slides for the presentation that. Um, it might look like I've used the same picture three times, but in actual fact, all of the cameras in this range look exactly the same, whether they are the new five megapixel model 
the three megapixel model or the just the HD, which is which is a two megapixel model, two megapixel and that's a, that's a very conscious decision <clears throat> by by D-Link, isn't it? It was. So uh, in the past, when we started our vigilance range, and we also had some other cameras as well, which we uh, fit into a different different older range entirely. Um, we kind of we kind of saw that there were issues where we'd bring out a camera, and maybe you'd have um a different bracket for it and you'd have to mm. fit it and, and things like that and it wasn't really working so uh, a choice was made to try and stand up standardize mm. the cameras themselves so that you can still use accessories and things like that mm. and really is you're just changing the interior of the design not the exterior sure so yeah, yeah, yeah all of the cameras yeah. in our bullet range our vigilance range three that you see here they're, yeah. they're designed for outdoor use um, they're designed to be powered by PoE, and, and they use the same brackets. And yeah, and like and they look they look pretty good as well. So it's not like yeah, they've exactly. made it's yeah. not like they've made a fashion faux pas <laughs> and then just replicated it three times. <laughs> I, I think I think these four sevens are pretty smart cameras. Yeah, they are. They're yeah. they're, they're nice little chunky feel good design. They don't yeah. feel cheap or rubbish. Yeah, like yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah. And and they really are designed for outdoor use. So mm. they've got that quality build in it as well. So next in the range, um, we have our um, four six. The these are the fisheye versions, and yeah, I I right. really I really like the four six two five version here. I I don't know if this one's going to be that same design moving forward, Craig, because there is obviously a visual there difference was, between yeah. the two five and the two two. Slight yeah. difference. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, mm. what our uh, legendary product managers come up with next. <laughs> but it's the min it's the minimalism of the four six two five that I like. It's not uh it, it's just it, is. it doesn't have any unnecessary corners, it's just a sleek design. So no, it doesn't. This is this is my this is my <clears throat> favourite camera, if that's possible to have one in the vigilance <laughs> range. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, the fun the thing about fish eye is, is you have to kind of see it to really understand yes. what it does. Yes. Um now we've put these into some warehouses in the past, mm. um really high up warehouses and we've managed to capture the entire floor from above mm. because it's such a wide angle. And when I show these to people in, in uh, up front, what you generally see is that you can stand right on the side, right on the, as if it's not even looking at you and mm. you still see everything and capture me. Mm. Yeah. Okie doke. Um, next, we're going to have a quick look at some of the accessories. Yeah. Um, these these are for the four six um, series of uh, of cameras, and these are these are very um, important because these are the dome cameras. Yeah. So the dome cameras are more fixed in position. Um, so we've got the three options here. The two of them, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong here, Craig, but two of them, the wall mount and the ceiling mount, the first two are fixed, but then the third one allows for a little bit more yeah so it's, it's an angling thing so ah, um okay first bracket would really be designed to go maybe on a corner edge and what you can do is you can you can get a look down underneath you which nice. is the real yep. focus of it mm -hmm. um likewise the ceiling mounts probably more, more designed to be used indoors okay um and it'll give you just a little bit of wide angle so what you can do is they can actually rotate the camera around mm -hmm. and, and change the camera if you need to in the future so say the design looks yeah. And then obviously with the mount angle bracket, then you can get that mounted position if you if you need something a little bit more head on. Sure. So so you you've got a little bit of different oh. changes. And people people forget about this stuff when they when they purchase their cameras, don't they? That's uh, it's always it's always good to remind that people that this is here and that uh, um, yeah if, if if you buy these along with the camera, this will help you make the most out of uh, yeah, out of it. Otherwise, you'll you'll get a camera and nothing to attach it to the wall with. Yeah, maybe absolutely. super glue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Not recommended, people. <laughs> um, just to, just to move on, um, talking about the highlights um, of the series overall. Um, all the cameras in this range have the H.265 format, um, That's right. which um, most people, if you if you're into video, will will, will understand. Um, um, I have some H.265 videos uh, that compressed, and they're they're both half the size of H.264 files, and they also have a higher color bit rate. Um, so I love H.265 format. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And mm. um, so how the video compression actually works is it will generally take that first initial frame, sometimes yeah. called the golden frame. 
um, and then any movement that happens after that, that will be super laid. So anything that's the same is, is thrown mm. away and anything mm. that changes within that frame is kept and they're overlaid yeah. together and that's how you get movement. Yeah. So when you understand that that's how you can capture movement, mm. you can understand that there are things that you can throw away. Sure. And when you discard that information, you're compressing the file itself, nice. it's not capturing it all. Mm. That's, that's generally how compression mm. works. Yeah. And the H.265 part, that's just a, a newer way of saying it does better than H.264, which we've yeah. used yeah. throughout the past, and it's, it's newer technology, saves you on the storage space, yeah. Um, yeah. so we, we have a full solution for that. Too. And, um, and anybody who watches Netflix or a streaming service, if you have that little information in the corner um, that tells you how the bit, ra uh, bit rate of your video is, is changing over time, it's never a stable thing. Um, so the, the two examples in here, it's just important to point out that those examples aren't static and that that bit rate will go up and down over time for both yeah, of those variable, beats. Variable. Yeah. Okay. Um, IR, infrared. Um, you can see here the impact that um, th this has on the, the images and how much it really does allow you to pick out objects um, and other stuff um, yeah, um, during the night time. Uh, the, the picture on the right, the traffic cam is obviously, it's it's easier for our cameras to pick out stuff there because of the headlights as a light source. But mm -hmm. the image on the left of the underground parking structure, yeah. uh, there's probably no light source. So that is entirely generated by our camera. So that's right. Pretty well, impressive. <laughs> some thinking of these newer lighting uh, in some of these uh, newer builds, say they've got a new build mm. come up, they've got an underground parking. Yes, in, my friend has that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of these lights, they're actually, um, um, they come on automatically. Yes, when, motion, when sensor. Around, yeah. motion sensor. Yeah. So actually capturing yeah. data that's something that's already down there. It's nice to be able to see the you know see see the environment mm. when the lights are off too. Mm. Um, so what will happen is it'll actually generate its own light from the camera itself. It's not like a standard light. It's it's, it's a, like a red that, that beams out. But we call it high contrast mode actually because it's slightly different from from true infrared. Okay. Uh, mm. Which is an older technology. Um, but high contrast really, you know, capture that view of, of the night, and it got up to thirty meters, which is really nice. quite wide. There's the proof, yeah. yeah. Good, good for that. What you say, Craig? The underground parking in a in a block of flats or something? Yeah. Absolutely spot on. Okay. Um, next feature, <laughs> WDR wide dynamic range, and and once again the, the the difference between the two images there is very clearly um, yeah. demonstratable. Um, when, when, when we looked at this slide before, I remarked to Craig um, about the picture on the left and the picture on the right and how the cityscape in the background changes um, from picture to picture, but does, does that... So it's a minimal change in the Yeah, background. yeah, it's, it, it, it's a minimal change, yeah. but the camera is to, const is to capture what's going on in the foreground, so that's, that's why this is such a good um, piece of kit to have That's included right. in the cameras. Yeah, yeah. so to WDR for those uh, who might not have used it on their mobile phones, a lot of mm. mobile phones do have WDR these days. What it does, wow. it, it actually Crazy. takes it, <laughs> it takes a few images. So sometimes, I don't know if you've ever used a mobile phone with it, you, you might see that there's slightly longer delay than when it's off. Right. What it's actually doing is it's taking multiple images at the same time, mm. and it's changing the brightness of some of the, some of the images and overlaying them. So they okay. overlay together, so you, you get the higher contrast between the back and the foreground. So there's there's everyone's homework for today. Yeah. Take some pictures yeah. with the WDR yeah. enabled on your phone. That's nice. right. Mm. The nice thing is, it's, it's memory, it's a video camera, it's going all the time, so it's mm. just a snapshot like a phone, so it's got a lot more, more, lot more data to do. But what you can get from that is, if there's a sudden change in the environment where light source suddenly comes into play, mm. The camera could compensate for that so sure, that you can still sure. see what's happening. It might take a second or two, but it will compensate, um, which is perfect for anything that's looking at, um, say, you're in a warehouse. And a window. You, yeah, you open a shutter in a warehouse, you're watching that shutter, and the thumb yeah, starts beaming yeah, in. Yeah. You know, it's one of the very, very, very useful. Very useful. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, well, Ron Seal slide, IP66, I think everybody. Yeah. Um, pretty much understands what that means. So that's right. Yeah, it's just a different gradient. So IP55 yeah. might handle dust, and, and IP6 might handle even more dust or dirt, <laughs> things like that. So the higher the rating, the better. 
and a lot of our cameras are IP66 rated um, awesome. and even IP68 rated as well, which means that it can really take some uh, heavy water and rain, which you need, of course. Well, I look, don't know. At, look at the weather Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> well, last night, why not? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, NVRs. Um, so we have a we, we have three different options um, uh, when it comes to NVRs, and it, um, it, each of them comes with their own um, little. Yes, they have their own little, little quirks, nuances. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll go. I'm going to actually start with the middle one um, because this one I think would be more towards um, a very small environment. Sure. So we'll start off in that small business environment. It comes with a HDMI port, which is really essential. Okay. And it allows you to out, plug yeah. into a TV. Right. But it does have a network port as well, but it does have that HDMI. Okay. And what that means is you can put that onto your network via a switch, but also plug it into a TV, and then you'll be able to have up to 16 channels on that device. Ooh, so it okay. supports up to 16 uh, cameras for recording. All of these report up to 16. <clears throat> so that's our first device. It has one single bay or one single hard drive. Okay. okay. So depending on the size, you can go up to about 10 terabytes for right. a single hard drive. So the second one I'll, I'll say is the uh, the one on the left, which is the dnr 3220 This one, you kind of, uh, it's really designed for maybe a larger environment or, or maybe a few more cameras than, than that single small business use case. Right. And what you actually do is you put this on the network itself and you don't put that onto a TV this time. The reason you don't put it to a TV is because in a larger environment, you won't have so many TVs that you can use, you see. Sure. You want to be able to view all of these that you put in through one monitor. So you might have, um, say, 60 cameras that you're putting in and, mm. and maybe have you know, three or four of these NVRs um, doing all your recording. So one NVR might do six or seven devices, however you want to do it, depending on how much you're recording you want. Cool. See, so like we discussed, if you went up to 16 cameras, you're not going to get much recording time on the hard drive, you see. So maybe you would do a two bay storage and maybe three or four cameras, and then you have a few of those in your environment, network them together, and then you use one monitor, mm. uh, one, one web browser, and we do have software that allows you to do this so that you can view all of those streams from one, one position on your network. So you don't need a TV. You do it through. You can do it through a laptop. You through can do a browser. It through, you can nice. still put it to a TV if you want to. You know, <laughs> there are ways of doing it. Mm -hmm. But this, that's what it's designed for. Sure. And then finally, it comes on to our one on the right, which is our uh, 2020, DNR2020. Now, this one is designed with a little bit of both. So it kind of fits in between those. So okay. it's got HDMI, can go to uh, a TV source. Right. This one's slightly different because it's got <coughs> excuse me, four ports of PoE as well. Ooh. So if you Bonus. want just a one fit solution, you don't have to worry about extra switches and you've just got a few cameras and you want to do some really good recording, it comes with two bays of hard drives for these ones, Ooh. then you can do that recording and just add the four cameras. Additionally, it goes up to 16. So if you put PoE switch into it, you'd be able to add six extra cameras up to 16. Right. Yeah, okay. exactly. You can still network them the same way as the 322L. So mm. if you want to do it that way, you can. Um, I, I, like, I like to refer to it as the chip shop drive because <laughs> that's perfect. These have gone into some chip shops that we have sure. um, around the country. Uh, I won't mention the names because uh, it's under NDA. Mm. Um, but these, these, these are really great for that. Brilliant. Um, and and they, they just work solid. If you want two or three cameras, four cameras, that's perfect. If you want to go more, it can do that too. Cool. Now, lastly, what I'll say is the two bay drives that are on the, the, the one on the left and the one on the right. Mm. What you can do is you can either have them double up the storage, so to say 20 terabytes of data, right? or you can keep it at your 10 data and then have one of, both of them recording the same thing at the same time. Now, you might say, why would you want to do that? The reason backup. you want to do that is backup. Mm -hmm. If one of these hard drive fails, you've lost your video footage. Now, over time, hard drives do fail. And oh. when you're recording, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can attest to that, Greg. <laughs> now, when you're recording continuously all the time, never stopping all day long, it's a lot of hard drive wear. Mm. So having those two bays can be quite essential in, a, in an emergency. Can the, can the hard drives be switched out? Yeah, you can swap them out. So um, if, if, if we you... have a compatibility list for all of these. Ah, okay. Um, so you do have okay. to check the compatibility list. And what we generally check is with a NAS quality hard drive. Right. Right. So something that's designed to get that robust use all the time, recording all the time. Those are the best hard drives to use. Mm. Mm.
Excellent. Okay, let's let's move on. Um, just a nice shot example from the MVR. What do you call this? The MVR software, Craig? The MVR controller face? Yeah, the GUI. The GUI. So th this okay. is actually on the MVRs themselves, and this one is the 2020 that we just discussed. Hmm. Um, so you can see we can do multiple views. We can go up to 16 channels. You can change it to do manual recording. Yeah. If there's PTZ, then it, it's designed to work with those who are on VIF control as well. Yeah. Um, and you can either add them by. I, I get the sneaky suspicion that it's lunchtime at this office because I cannot see a single person, only one person in the warehouse, yet all the cars are in the car park. So I'm thinking it's either lunchtime or coffee break time. <laughs> could yeah. Be, could be. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, it looks uh, it looks fairly simple to use. There's a lot of buttons, but I'm sure it's uh, it's, it's it very self-explanatory. Yeah. Once, once you get yeah. to grips with it, it's really yeah. just a case of. Uh, Adding a new camera, search feature for it, you add the camera, and then you can change how you want it to record as well. Like Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. Motoring through. Um, just a quick slide. Um, DBU Cam. DBU Cam is the software um, that yeah. we use. So we have a software uh, version as well as uh, just the hardware. So hmm. um, good for big environments. Hmm. Um, plug this into your server core. Um, and then you'll be able to see and monitor all of the cameras that's on your on your data. Sure. Um, two two different options. There's there, two different so. options. One is a free option, which is our DVU Cam DCS100 package. Okay. Uh, and the other is a DCS250. The differences between them are uh, the 250 does third-party cameras as well, not just dealing cameras. Right. Um, and it will do multi-screen <laughs> recording and playback. Multi-playback is uh, the real key thing. So, for sure. example, let's say you had an incident. Um, and you want to view that instant, maybe it's a, like a van that's come onto the premises, it's smashed through a door, they poured out the van, they're in the back of the warehouse, they grabbed things all over the place. Oh, and it happens, we've seen that. <laughs> um, you want to be obviously using multiple cameras to view yes. all this at the same time. So when you're playing that back, you kind of need to be able to see every camera, what's happening and how they're running around. The yeah, so it's constructed time. Like, police and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just to be clear, these are solutions that if an incident like that happens, you will be able to pull off the video file, give that to the police, and you will be able to proceed with criminal conviction so long as you have the date stamps and the times, correct time set for it. Excellent. Excellent. Um, just going back, uh, the vigilance cameras, looking at the... Um, looking at the 4.6 series, which is our range of dome cameras. Yes, yeah, so the dome cameras, um, we've already discussed the brackets for them and everything like that. Again, we've done the same thing. Um, what we've done is we've kept the same form factor so that you could still use those standard brackets and then yep. just change the interiors of how they perform in terms of megapixel and things like Apart that. Apart from that 4802 outlier down there at the bottom. <clears> the 4802 is slightly <laughs> different. <laughs> Definitely something to keep in mind. Um, really good for things like uh, reception desks. Oh yes. Um, yeah. And the nice thing is, this is a pan tilt zoom camera. Mm. Uh, so that's that's why it's that's why it's, why it's, that's yeah, why it's in here. And that's why it's it's, three it's slightly different. Yeah. But it's part of this range, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. It's, it's not a mechanical yeah. one. It's yeah. just a manual one. Sure. But the room environment changes. You don't have to change the position of the camera. You just change the position of the lens, mm. and you can spin it around. So if you put that in the middle of your room. You'll always be able to have a the look whole, around. yeah, the whole exactly. feature, yeah, yeah. So, so, so as, as Craig mentioned, like with the earlier um, bullet cameras, <clears> these <throat> ones we have the five megapixel, the three megapixel, and the just the full HD two megapixel versions, and they all right. they, they all look exactly the, the same with the yeah, smart design. Yeah, the, and the the difference with the bullet cameras over the dome cameras. Uh, dome cameras you generally put on the outside more so than, than bullets. I mean, you can put okay. bullets, but bullets. the reason for that is because they're IK10 rated right. and IK30 rated. Mm. Um, and what that is, is um, that's vandalism. Right. So whacking one of these things with a stick, it's not going to crack the case. Mm. You've got to put some real force to damage one of these devices. Especially ours. Ours are extra tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, who buys them? That's the question, isn't it? That's that's the question that um, every <laughs> everyone wants the answer to. Yeah. But um, the, the the way we see it is that this is this is this is obviously a, a, a business presentation. Yes. Um, and 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 any business that's looking to set up a remote surveillance, any business that's got a premises they want to protect, 
or um, a, an office block where they need to identify the people who are moving in and out with it within the office block. So, yeah. um, and um, some things that I've encountered uh, in the past is uh, they have a thing called a bonded warehouse. Okay. A bonded warehouse has a certain set of restrictions that they have to follow. They have to be able to monitor both the uh, exits, entrances, okay. on both sides sure. um, in that kind of environment. Um, so there is absolutely a need for these things in the warehouse mm. environment. You obviously want to be able to check uh, what people are doing, make mm. sure that safety standards are followed in your oh, warehouse, yeah. things yeah, like that. Definitely. Likewise in schools, um, school corridors, you want to be able to keep the kids safe. Mm. You know, so it comes into that safeguarding area. And just being able to watch your car, you know, put one out the car seat, make sure your car's yeah, okay well, all the time. And people forget just, about that, don't they? Yeah, but, um, if someone, it's you very know, useful if, if you have a little scrape or if, yeah, uh, absolutely. if anything gives you a happens. chance to see when it happened. Mm. Um, and find out hopefully who as well. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what makes the facial and number plate recognition on these models um, such a such a great feature. Um, yes, uh, the, the uh, cameras can do facial and number plate recognition, uh, AMPR and things like that. That's really mm -hmm. down to the software and, and some sure. of the MPRs as well too. Sure. Um, so just to be clear, um, our software does do some uh, funny funny things for our, uh, what we can do with cameras. So things like people monitoring. Sure. Um, so if someone steps over a line, we can count how many people are going over that line. Mm. So people counting. Um, we can also look at uh, people identification as well. Um, so we can actually count people going past, not just objects and, and cars and things like that. Excellent. Um, so these cameras are available to do that. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I mean, most of the rest of the slide, um, we, we've been over in, in, in various parts, and it's just on there to kind of remind people the, uh, we talked about the recording in darkness, difficult lighting um, conditions, things like the infrared and the WDR yeah. really help with those kind of stuff, the warehouse windows or building entrances, we touched on that. And um, we touch, also touched on the, um, Craig mentioned the IK10 and then the IP66 ratings for both of these cameras, That's which right. help us with the vandalism and extreme yeah. weather. So yeah. we pretty much got all the bases covered. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it for, um, uh, the surveillance and, and, and AVS part of the um, webinar. Um, just wanted to briefly mention to everyone that um, we are we are hitting the road. So we're taking this webinar live um, and That's extending right. it by a few hours as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if, if, if you have liked any of the webinars we've done in the past or you like the information we, we, we're going to do today, um, on the webinars, we've mainly talked about what is now, what is out in the market now. Um, and what we're going to do on the roadshows is talk more about what's coming soon, where are D-Link going, where is networking going. Um, so we're going to do sections on the future of um, uh, switching, 5G, Wi-Fi 6, and, and, and all of those kind of bits. Um, you can see the four dates up on the screen there that we have set in place, the first of those is going to be at the glorious home of the future Premier League champions, um, Liverpool. Uh, Craig doesn't really do football, so yeah, he, he won't really. object to me. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they have stuff. a nice bar or something like that. Oh, they have a great <laughs> bar. We've, we've booked the Legends Lounge um, there, so that would be absolutely fantastic. We'd love anybody listening to the webinar, um, your friends, anybody else who wants to join, um, to sign up, um, dlink.com slash events. Um, and if you can't join us at Anfield because you're down in the south um, or in the Midlands, we've got an option at the MK Don, so Stadium MK in Milton Keynes on the 19th of March. Um, we've got one where I'm really looking forward to, which is in Bath, and we're doing that in the pump rooms, which is part of the Roman Baths. So um, yeah. we could do a lovely tour of the uh, baths afterwards, but we're not supplying anyone with um, swimming trunks. That's you have fun. to bring your own. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a rather, a, a rather um, different location, we have the pod booked on the, um, on the 14th of May in Southampton, uh, which um, is a giant pod within the Solent Business yeah, Centre. Yeah, very um, interesting. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Look, look out for the email from me when that comes out closer to the date. Um, but yes, that, that's, that's a very unique location um, and should make for a very, very good day and presentation there. Excellent. We'll be there. Yeah. 
just got to build the presentations now. <laughs> <laughs> just got to do the hard work. Um, so that's that's pretty much it from me. I've mentioned this. We've got a, another webinar in um, in two weeks' time, and Craig and myself will be further discussing industrial switches. Awesome. Uh, which which is always a favourite amongst the um, you know people. <laughs> it's it's um it's it's a very it's a very growth marketplace let's put it, it that is. way um, if you can find your way into that market yeah. and we'll describe how yeah. we can do that well that's 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 what we that's what we're trying to do we're trying to explain a lot about this industrial switches because there's a lot of um uh it's there's there's not massive understanding of what they are and what they can do so mm -hmm. join join us for um a real deep dive into that um I, I forgot to ask at the start, but um, people obviously know about the questions function. Uh, we do have a couple of questions. Got two questions, yeah, just Ooh. two very quick ones. Uh, can the camera provide a raw stream? That's from Thomas. Yes, it can. All the cameras we have uh, are RSTP based. So what you can actually do is you can stream out just the raw thing, and then you can use that in your software or whatever you want to do and manipulate that stream. Itself. Is, a, is a raw stream an uncompressed stream? Is that it's not an uncompressed stream. What it just means is that you don't have to use or log into the GUI or things like that to view it. Ah, you can just push okay. that stream like a URL, and then you can feed that into other applications and things like that. Fantastic. So they can do okay. that. Uh, second question from Richard. Uh, do the old MDRs work with the new cameras? Uh, do the old NVRs work with the new cameras? Yes, they do. What you have to be really careful of is that you make sure that when you do try to add a new camera, you make sure the old NVR has the latest device packs available. Ah. I won't say it will work with all the new cameras because obviously that's in the future and I can't predict that. <laughs> um, but yes, we generally what we do is we try and keep the older ones Right. Up to date to a certain point before we'd say end of life. So, so the old the old MBRs, the range of MBRs before <coughs> this range. Yeah. So, so uh, okay. say for example DNR three two six, I think it was, right. um, which supersede, uh, which was superseded by the three two two L. Okay. Um, yes, we we do still support the new cameras on some of those older devices and firmwares, and some of the older one MBRs as well. But if you if you do need to upgrade your MVR, you're welcome to drop us an email. Certainly, the email yeah. on the screen, um, yeah. UKI Sales at dealing .com. I'm sure we can sort you out with a very reasonable price on <laughs> one of those. Um, as always, um, feel free to call into the office if you want to talk to our salespeople or if you want to talk to Craig about anything we've discussed today. Yeah, as well. Craig is available um, to come out um, for site surveys and and piece. Um, and to help with things like that. Yes, yeah, so we can help with virtual site surveys and we can also help with physical site surveys yep. uh, if you've got a really big installation that you need help with. Yeah, more than more than happy to lend our um, lend our expertise in those manners. So, so feel free to contact us on those details. Um, this is it for another exciting instalment. Okay, um, we'll be back in a, in, in a couple of weeks to discuss industrial switches. So okay, see you then. Goodbye.